Hello, everybody. My name <coughs> is on the board here, and my slide is on the web, if you want to follow it. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. It's my first time at uh, EuroSciPy. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some simulations that I have performed. And I do uh, computational fluid mechanics. That's my uh, job as uh, an associate professor. And uh, uh, direct numer numerical simulations of turbulence are often performed with very low level Fortran C codes, which is not very strange because these simulations, as you can see here, they are usually very huge, and uh, this involves serious number crunching, uh, serious uh, high-performance computing. Whenever there is a new supercomputer somewhere in the world, th some guy <coughs> with a uh, DNS solver written in Fortran 77, sometimes in the 80s, is going to test his code on this supercomputer. So state-of-the-art Fortran 77, maybe C. So I've been working maybe 10 years with Python. I love sci scientific computing. I love Python. Uh, and for this project, I know, I know how to write one of these number crunchers, one of these direct numerical solvers. Uh, and I know Python, so I thought maybe I should try to, uh, to, to write one of these solvers from scratch in Python, just to see if it actually is possible. And I wanted to use only household tools like uh, NumPy and uh, SciPy, maybe, uh, uh, well, tools that are available to most people. And I wanted to test this code on uh, thousands of processors, uh, billions of unknowns, really huge super, uh, on supercomputers. And it turns out that I can write 100 lines of code in Python that can actually do, create one of these images you saw before, and it runs on a supercomputer. So what is it all about? Well, it's about solving Navier-Stokes equations. That's fluid flow. That's these equations, they describe turbulence. Uh, if the domain happens to be triply periodic, then you can lift the equations into Fourier space. That's a big advantage. Uh, so we're only looking at a triply periodic domain here. Uh, so the Navier-Stokes equations, they can be lifted into to Fourier space. And all of a sudden, you have a set of ordinary differential equations that can be stepped forward in time using, for example, fourth order Runge-Kutta. Nonlinear term can be treated with the pseudospectral uh, method. And all of a sudden, you have a classical pseudospectral Navier-Stokes solver. It's not all that much to it, but to solve these equations like this, it has been done since the 1970s. The first DNS was performed in uh, 1972 on 30,000 unknowns. That's pretty decent in 1972. Today, they are solving these equations on hundreds of billions of nodes, uh, and that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, so how do we implement this in Python from scratch using only household tools? Well, of course, you need a computational mesh. And in this case, in my case, it's easy because it's just uh, a square box. But I have to divide it, distribute it between processors. So each color here represents one uh, CPU, one processor. And each processor has uh, his own part of the big mesh. And of course, I need to be able to communicate and that is usually done with MPI, the message passing, passage interface. And it so happens that you can do MPI very easily, very nicely uh, in, in Python. 
and uh, if you use MPI for Pi and NumPy arrays, then it's as fast actually to do distributions, to send one array from one process to another. It's as fast as you can do it in C. And uh, that's why I've been using this uh, MPI for Pi in this project. Uh, MPI is basically needed just to do Fourier transforms. You also need it to do post-processing, but that's uh, beside the point here. So how do we do three-dimensional Fourier transform in parallel in Python? It's no, there's no package to do it, no module that you can uh, download. But of course, NumPy has its own FFT, SciPy has its own FFT, and there are also a few others out there, but they are all working in a single processor. So I had to adapt these to, to MPI, and it took actually five lines of code to achieve a three-dimensional FFT in, uh, in Python. I'm not going to go into the details, I only have a few minutes. But if, if you look at this, this code here, you see there's an all-to-all -all line with all-to-all. -all. That's all the MPI communication required, one line. You don't really have to set up much. Of course, there's a, there are some arrays here there that have been pre-allocated, uh, so there's a few more lines in allocation, but to actually do the 3D FFT is only uh, five lines of code. Uh, the other way to, to decompose the mesh is called pencil decomposition. This first, the first one was slab decomposition. Second is pencil decomposition. It's slightly more complicated, but you can use it for much higher number of processors. So if you want to run a simulation on 100,000 CPUs, you have to go to uh, this uh, pencil decomposition. You cannot use slab. But this takes about 10 lines of code. No, uh, nothing more to it. Now, if you look at the rest of the equation that I'm trying to solve, besides the Fourier transform, all you really have to do is multiply large arrays with each other. Uh, and then subtract them from each other, of course. Uh, but uh, all in all, it's just NumPy use, uh, universal functions. And NumPy ufunks, that's a function that loops over the entire computational mesh every time it's called. So th this is basically what it, what it takes to build this solver. So now I'm saying I've built the solver. It took less than 100 lines of Python code to do so. And now I was so fortunate to be allowed to test this on a BlueJean computer uh, at the KAUST Supercomputing Laboratory. And uh, it's been tested for the case that is running uh, on the screen. It's just a standard test case for uh, Navier-Stokes equations. Now, these are the results. Uh, and remember, this is for Python 100 line compared to pure low-level C++ solver. They're doing exactly the same thing, but uh, as it turns out, the C++ code is actually 30-40% faster, which was a bit disappointing in the beginning. Uh, but uh, I, I learned to accept it. Uh, <laughs> at least when I understood why it was slower. Uh, and but as, if you look at this test, it's actually for a substantial box. The red dot on the far right corner of the weak scaling test has a computational box of the size 2048 to the power of three. And that's 10 billion uh, grid points. So it's, it's a huge simulation. And it's still scaling rather nicely, but C++ is faster. And for strong scaling, Python is struggling quite a bit. So why is the Python solver not scaling better? Well, in these five lines of code to do the 3D FFT, 
I had to throw in a for loop. I couldn't get rid of it. And that's actually, that's the explanation. That's why Python solver is not scaling better. So I, I can easily get rid of that uh, if I accept Cython or uh, something, something else. But not with NumPy. I couldn't get rid of it. Okay, so why is the Python solver slower than C++? Well, I mentioned the for loop, but that's just a minor thing. It's usually, now it's, it's actually the universal functions, the NumPy u -funks. And they're not always as great as you want them to be. And for one thing, I have to do a cross product in my code. And this is the code. It's just uh, three lines or four lines to do it. It calls a lot of u -funks. Every multiplication is a u -funk. Uh, Every minus is a u -funk. And it ends up looping over the same mesh many, many times when one loop would be sufficient. Uh, also, there's a lot of temporary arrays being created, too many. And I, I can get rid of temporary arrays, so I can speed it up by 30%, but I cannot uh, bring the u funks to not loop over the mesh every time they're called. So the only viable solution that I really found was to hard code this loop into Cython, Numba, or Weave. They all do the trick. Uh, Cython, Numba are equally fast and uh, at the same speed as C++. Weave is a bit slower. I, I'm not sure why, but I didn't go very deeply into it. But this is five times faster than the original. So now it's as fast as C++ and it's five times faster. Solver optimized with Cython is now exactly as good as the pure C++ solver. It's still a Python solver, just has a few routines moved to Cython. Okay, final word of warning. Uh, dynamic loading of Python on a blue gene is very, very uh, time consuming. Uh, I was fortunate enough to find a, a version called Scalable Python that could load Python in 30 seconds when it usually takes five, 15 minutes. So th this took care of that, but uh, this code has disappeared. Uh, this version of Python has disappeared. I'm, uh, I'm not sure where it is. <laughs> Maybe I think you see Enkovara who wrote the code. Hey, so it still exists, right? We put it somewhere. Well, thank you very much for writing it. Okay, summary. Uh, well, you can just read that, uh, and maybe we can take some questions because uh, I'm running out of time. Yeah. Okay. So, questions? Hi, yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in what you're doing because I'm doing something similar with a finite difference code for electromagnetics. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering, you said it was a, an explicit solver. Yeah. So what kind of communication is going on then with when you're using MPI? What information needs to uh, be It's passed? It's only the FFT. It's only uh, the, the Fourier transform that requires, because of the explicit solver, so it's, it's only the FFT. And one. Actually, two questions. Uh, did, did you use the NumPy M MKL version? And did you look at NumExper that might, I don't know if it works. It I, might I, work. I looked at NumExper, which helped, but not enough, nothing com not compared to Numba or Cython. But not NumPy, M what did you call it, MPL? Okay. No, I didn't try that. Okay. Well, so thank you.